Prince Charles was touted to become Governor General of Australia, when the country's opposition leader was controversially appointed as Prime Minister by the Crown in 1975, according to reports, and his correspondence at the time has become the subject of fresh legal proceedings today. Queen Elizabeth II's political neutrality has recently come into the fore of national debate, as Her Majesty faces the prospect of a potential vote of no confidence in Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Although the palace is said to be working to ensure that Queen will not have to intervene, Her Majesty and her son Prince Charles did in fact become involved in a constitutional crisis in Australia in 1975, when the Crown had to step in to resolve a political deadlock. Added to this, at the time, the Prince of Wales' name was being touted to fill a crucial political role in the country. The 1975 episode, known as the Dismissal, has been described as the greatest political and constitutional crisis in Australian history, and one of its most divisive and corrosive episodes. Researcher from the Institute of Government, Sarah Nixon, speaking to BBC Newsnight, said, in 1975 Australia faced its own constitutional crisis when the government was unable to get the parliament to pass the bills needed to pay for things. Things like civil servants pay, essential services, so the country could have ground to a halt. Gough Whitlam was dismissed by Governor General Sir John Kerr, who then commissioned the leader of the opposition Malcolm Fraser as caretaker Prime Minister. Ms Nixon continued, it damaged all involved the incoming and outgoing Prime Minister and the Governor-General himself. The dismissal of Whitlam sparked protest demonstrations in Australia, and demands for the Queen to restore him as Prime Minister. The Governor-General at the time, Sir John Kerr, was hugely damaged by the crisis and resigned early, living much of his remaining life abroad. However, Prince Charles's name was being proposed as the next Governor-General of Australia at the time, which incoming Prime Minister Fraser was reportedly seriously considering. As the dismissal crisis continued to spur on the Republican movement in Australia into the late 70s and beyond, however, Fraser reportedly cooled on the idea. As late as 1981, the year of Charles's royal wedding to Princess Diana, reports from Canberra indicated, Prince Charles had actively explored the idea of an appointment with leading politicians when he was in Australia earlier this year. But public opinion polls and the opposition of Australia's Labour Party have apparently persuaded him an appointment is unlikely. Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser has supported the idea of Prince Charles being made Governor-General, but even he is no longer actively pursuing the possibility. Historian Jenny Hawking, in her 2015 book The Dismissal Dossier even claims that Kerr himself suggested Prince Charles as Australia's future Governor-General. Added to this, Professor Hawking writes, having failed in his efforts to mediate Prince Charles's interest in taking up the mantle of Governor-General, Kerr later suggested to Whitlam that the Australian government purchase a large rural holding with appropriate homestead, servants, upkeep, and furnishings, to encourage the Prince of Wales to make more regular and longer trips to Australia. An astonished Whitlam declined, suggesting that the purchase of an Australian property for the use of the Prince of Wales was not a priority for national expenditure. Professor Hawking also claimed Prince Charles was more directly involved in the proceedings of the 1975 crisis, as she discovered quotations from letters between the Prince of Wales and Kerr, in Kerr's private journals, that discussed the possibility of dismissing the government two months before the event took place. She discovered in Kerr's private papers that Kerr had been worried Prime Minister Whitlam might revoke his appointment as Governor-General, in order to prevent his own dismissal. However, Prince Charles reportedly assured Kerr, but surely Sir John, the Queen should not have to accept advice that you should be recalled at the very time should this happen when you were considering having to dismiss the government. Kerr's concern was then said to have been conveyed from Charles to the Queen's private secretary at the time, Martin Charteris. Professor Hawking writes, Charteris told him that should this contingency occur, the Queen would try to delay things for as long as possible, although Charteris acknowledged in the end the Queen would have to act on the advice of her Prime Minister. Later, the Prince of Wales is said to have written to Kerr conveying his moral support. 
he reportedly urged Kerr not to lose heart in the face of domestic hostility. Writing in 2015, Ms. Hawking said, by entering into this communication with Kerr over his own position, and agreeing even to consider a means of delaying it, the palace had interposed itself directly into matters of Australian politics. Professor Hawking, who was working from Kerr's journals and private papers, also moved to secure access to the original correspondence between the palace and the Governor-General. However the documents have been embargoed from public release by the palace, at least until 2027, and possibly indefinitely. The National Archive argued that the letters are personal communications between the Queen and the Governor-General and therefore exempt to the usual provisions that allow official records to become unsealed after 30 years. Just today, the academic launched a fresh legal bid to force Australia's National Archives to release the letters. She wrote in November, it is difficult to reconcile the label personal for any letters between the Governor-General and the Queen, two positions at the apex of our system of constitutional monarchy, let alone those written at a time of intense political upheaval and regarding the dismissal of a Prime Minister and his elected government.